Hello, this is a scenario I saw in one of the Facebook groups and I thought I will answer this because um, it, this looks a bit uh, difficult. Young woman, non-palpable petechial rash on legs after a sore throat. So lost outside the room, that's a big mistake. Two minutes is very valuable time. You need to use that two minutes properly. And if you are lost outside, then you will be in big trouble because you don't know what you are starting in the history. You don't know what you are examining. So properly read the scenario outside the room. Um, examiner greeted then sat down, remained quite behind me. So no help there. No examiner will help you. They will simply sit there and they will be observing you and they will be marking whether you said the right things or not. So that's very important. Um, I began to say rubbish like no signs of joint involvement. Um, thought I'd better read the task again. So again wasting time. So examine her tummy looking for organomegaly. Then I looked for lymphadenopathy. Then I looked in the throat. Time was running out, so I said rash is most likely related to low platelets due to cross-reaction of viral sore throat. See, I, I think it's better if you are not sure of the diagnosis. Better don't say, I don't know what the diagnosis is. The examiner might pass you if you have taken proper history, if you have examined properly. Just because you have to tell a diagnosis, if you tell a diagnosis like this one, most probably the examiner will fail you just because you gave a diagnosis that is not related or not making any sense. Just reading what is there on the screen, I think the best, uh, I think uh, things we need to know is use the reading time properly. Ignore the examiner. Examiner is not there to help you. He's only there to mark you. And again, he's not there to fail you as well. You know, please don't think that um, the examiner is there to fail you. No examiner will fail you or you know try to pass you. They are there to give a feedback about what you did at that point of time. If you did well, they will pass you. If you didn't do well, they will fail you. Okay, so this is how I will think. You know, if I'm standing outside the room, I'll think sore throat rash. What are all the conditions that can present um, as a rash with sore throat, you know, think of common diagnosis first and you will be commonly right. My professor used to tell me when I was in medical school that if you tell a common diagnosis, you are commonly right. If you tell a rare diagnosis, you are rarely right. Okay, so I'll read out the, I'll, um, the comments that were given by other doctors here. Okay, meningococcal. Okay, so how many times meningitis will present with um, sore throat and rash. Hinox Shonlin Purpura, HSP. So how many times do you think HSP will present as a sore throat? ITP, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. So this is how you need to look. You know, one doctor uh, is saying that chicken pox, rubella, allergic reaction, rosacea, eczema, contact dermatitis, heat rash. See, AMC is an easy exam. You are telling the examiner to fail you by telling all these diagnoses. It's clearly given the patient has a sore throat. So why are you thinking about, you know, diagnosis which is not related to sore throat? You know, if you look at all the diagnoses, I think no one is talking about a basic viral upper respiratory infection, like a simple viral upper respiratory infection can present as a rash or um, you know something very simple like uh, you know Epstein-Barr virus I know you know it says petechial rash but still you know think about common diagnosis you know why will contact dermatitis present as sore throat or why will heat rash present as sore throat see this is how you need to think outside the room when you're thinking about the diagnosis make sure you tell them that you know, tell them a diagnosis that is related to the scenario, you know. So if you give diagnosis like eczema, contact dermatitis, heat rash, you will most likely fail. I'm not telling this to discourage, you know, the doctors who wrote it there. But see, this is the reality. Tell the proper diagnosis. If you don't know the diagnosis, just tell I'm not sure doctor. 
because the examiner might be a good man you know he might think okay the doctor took proper history doctor examined properly so why should i fail let me just give him borderline mark and you might pass but if you tell diagnosis that is clearly not related he is going to fail you for sure i hope um, this video helped you and um, you know join the 2015 amc clinical study group where i'll be posting some more videos and hopefully you guys can benefit uh, from you know from learning from these mistakes i wish you all the best